Hitler. But in many ways, that's the story of Silvio Berlusconi's career. He began as a cruise ship crooner and for some still retains the air of nightclub entertainer. But by the 1970s, Berlusconi had made a fortune in property. By the 80s, he controlled Italy's media and the best football team. And by the 90s, he was running the country. He used his shortcuts and friends and so absolutely, yes, he did. But all, lots of other people did without being as successful as he was. Uh, so for him, the most successful individualist in Italy is so easy to preach individualism to an individualistic country. Everybody listens to him. The conquered arts and minds of Italians. This is, this is uh, the reason of his success. He knows us, he knows us Italians and he speaks to us very directly. But now, Prime Minister for the third time in 16 years, things are going wrong. In Naples, there's been nowhere to put the rubbish after Berlusconi cancelled a landfill site. Conchita Sinino, who's followed this saga, says Berlusconi's been distracted. I broke the story that Berlusconi was supposed to come to Naples for a summit on the rubbish emergency. In fact, he used it as an excuse to visit a young girl. The girl was Noemi Letizia. She was just 18. Berlusconi was 73. From that moment, the 26th of April 2009, all of Berlusconi's political career and his image has been hit by the sexual scandal. Within weeks, a professional escort, Patrizia de Dario, was telling of wild parties at Berlusconi's Rome Palace. The second time was the evening Barack Obama was elected president. I asked him, which bed do you want me to go to? Because there are different beds. I asked if I should go to Putin's bed. Putin had given him a bed, a nice big one with a canopy and curtains. Well, I spent the whole night with the Prime Minister. During the night we talked, we joked. It's as if he's from a different planet. He's full of life. He's got more energy than a person of his age should have. Tales of the energetic premier scandalised some Italians, but as the author of a new Berlusconi biography notes, others admire him. There is something of him in every Italian. Maybe the way you look at your tax return, the way you look at a girl and you're married and she's far too young, but still you, 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 you linger a little bit too much. We went to Berlusconi's film company, run by his close friend Carlo Rossella. Rossella says it's natural for girls to go to Berlusconi's parties. Young girls want to show themselves, they want to be actress, they want to be, they want to be stars of the TV, they want, um, they want to improve their situation, so they go to the parties in Rome. Rome is full of parties. But the Dolce Vita can sour. A belly dancer arrested for theft was released after Berlusconi's intervention. The girl, stage name Ruby, said she'd been to Berlusconi's bunga bunga parties and he'd given her 7,000 euros, but they hadn't had sex. She was 17. What about the age of the girls? Does that worry the you age, at all? Uh, the age of the girls, are, are, uh, I mean, the, the age is always a normal age. You know, a bit, 17? Uh, no, 17, one. But uh, Berlusconi 18. has nothing to do with this girl. No, no, no sexual relations. Some are 18. 18, 19, but uh, you know, 18 is, 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 is not a young girl. When a girl is 18 today in the, in the, in the world, like today. Well, the Prime Minister is not a young man. I mean, he's 74. But you know, is, is, uh, I think this in Italy is normal to have parties with young girls. Everywhere there are parties with young girls, no problem. For Berlusconi, sex and politics are equal passions. His TV empire was erected on girly shows. Now he controls six of Italy's seven channels. His critics say he's changed the way Italians think. If you make an interview to all the young girls, they answer they would like to become a showgirl or a politician. They always have this kind of option. What, you think that's, that's what the way the culture's changed? 
This is, yes, the country is changing, yes. The model for these young dreams is Mara Kafania, a TV showgirl who caught Berlusconi's eye and ended up in the government. You can go on YouTube and see she's a calendar, totally naked and full of oil, and now she's minister, so she minister gives a lot of equal opportunity. So she's women's minister for women? Yeah. As unlikely as showgirls running the country, five ministers in Berlusconi's right-wing coalition are former socialists. One of their colleagues, who's now left Berlusconi, explained. Berlusconi was a man who promised a kind of liberal revolution in Italy. And many of us, meaning people coming from the Italian left, as I am, and many of us, try, just try to uh, make a kind of influence uh, on his behavior. You believed him then? I believe it, it was a chance. It was a chance. Why not? Why not to try? And it was a total failure. Next week's confidence vote has put Berlusconi under pressure, but he'll relish the fight. A year ago, campaigning in his stronghold of Milan, his teeth were smashed by a man wielding a replica of the city's cathedral, the Duomo. His reaction was typical. Now Berlusconi was resilient, indomitable. He stood as tall, defiant as he could and said he was fine, he'd survived. He later used the incident against his critics, saying his attacker had been insane, but nothing like as crazy as those, including court prosecutors, who down the years have repeatedly accused him of corruption. This is Milano Due, a Berlusconi-built estate of 10,500 apartments, hotels, schools and the headquarters of Berlusconi's TV empire. Milano Due is the foundation for his billions. But his critics say Berlusconi, the son of a bank clerk, has never explained where he found the initial investment. And this is Marcello Dell'Utri, for years Berlusconi's right-hand man. Delutri is awaiting sentence after being named as Berlusconi's go-between with the Mafia. He has nothing to hide. One day Berlusconi will clarify all these issues publicly. Berlusconi himself, who says he's been interviewed by the police around 600 times, angrily denies Mafia links. But then there's the case of Vittorio Mangano, who lived in Berlusconi's house for two years in the 1970s and was said to be his estate manager. He was also a killer with the Cosa Nostra. He went working with Berlusconi, but, but, he, but Berlusconi did, didn't know what, who, who, who he was. He didn't know? No. If people working for him has been condemned for things uh, for case of corruption and other things and they were doing it for him is pretty absurd. Sabina Gazanti is a satirist no longer welcome on Berlusconi's TV channels. Here she is as the man himself in her recent documentary. The subject, the mishandling of last year's earthquake in Aquila. With the control of all the media, you can't call it a democracy anymore because you can manipulate the public opinion as much as you want. On the very day next week, when Berlusconi faces a confidence vote in Parliament, Italy's constitutional court will decide whether to lift his prime ministerial immunity from prosecution. Matters are coming to a head. There were persistent allegations of Berlusconi's links to organised crime. You are British. The fact that you, you asked me the question, you assume that the prosecutors and the tribunals and the courts are, are the sort of referee of the sort of public game. In Italy, many people believe that, they, that they are, the referee cannot be believed. That if this thing had been going on for 20 years, how could you really trust the court that drags it along for 20 years? So many people don't trust the referees. Right they don't trust wrong, the legal system. They don't trust the legal system, that's obvious. 
But now there are new questions about Silvio's close friendship with Vladimir. WikiLeaks has revealed a cable from America's ambassador to Rome referring to a nefarious connection. The cable says sources believe that Berlusconi and his cronies are profiting personally and handsomely from many of the energy deals between Italy and Russia. So how does Berlusconi survive? Away from the intrigue, for most Italians, life goes on. They made up their minds about their premier, for good or ill, long ago. I think there is a shadow line between uh, uh, complicity, you know, he's one of us after all, and embarrassment. And there is a second shadow line between embarrassment and disgust. And I think it's definitely past the one between complicity and embarrassment. I mean, his numbers are down, but he hasn't crossed the second one yet. If he does, it's finished. He has seven lives, like the cat. <laughs> In Italy we say the cat has seven lives. Okay, Berlusconi has seven lives. Just the seven? Seven, seven, but uh, many. <laughs> With Silvio Berlusconi, even the rules of nature don't apply. He bestrides the stage, surgically enhanced, apparently younger than when first elected. He could be gone next week, but with the opposition split, he could go on, forever and ever.